Hey, what's up everyone? Jason Turley here, back with more Pico CTF. We're again looking at the reverse engineering categories from Pico CTF 2023. Last video, we solved Ready Gladiator Zero, which is all about an introduction to Core Wars and their unique red code assembly language instruction set. Today, we're looking at reverse. It seems like a very simple challenge, only worth 100 points, which typically means it's on the easier side. The description is simply try reversing this file question mark can you i forgot the password to this file please find it for me question mark even though that's not really a question so we can right click here and copy the link to this file all right if i open up my terminal window you can see i'm inside my reverse engineering directory i have my folder from last video let me make a, another one i'm just going to call this reverse because that's the name of the challenge we can cd into that and then we can download that challenge file all right, that downloaded very quickly. It was saved as ret, R-E-T, ls like L. Yep, it's right there. We can run file on it to figure out what kind of file this is, right? Is it text? Is it a script? Is it an executable? We see it's elf. So this is Linux version of an executable. On Windows, you have .exe. I'm not sure what you have on Mac. It might be elf as well, because Mac is Unix based. So 64-bit executable. Dynamically linked, we can go more in depth on that at some other time, but dynamically linked just means that any libraries it needs need to exist on the system and it's going to pull from those as it runs. The libraries are not compiled in this binary. It tells us the interpreter that's used and then the SHA-1 hash and it's not stripped. So I believe that means it still has the debugging symbols. So if you do GCC, the GNU C compiler with tag G, it still has the debugging symbols on it. Nice. So let's just run this program, right? Let's make it executable. And now let's run it dot slash ret. Enter the password to unlock this file. Uh, please sub, is that the password? You entered please sub access denied. Okay, so that's not the password. We can hit the up arrow, we can try again. Is it just password one? access denied okay so there's a few routes we can take we can open this up in some type of disassembler or decompiler like ghidra or gdb or ida pro but i like to start with the basics first let's look at how this program is actually running let me make sure i have ltrace and strace installed i do so ltrace you use that to look at the library calls a program makes and strace you can use that to look at the system calls a program is making Let's start at the top with Ltrace on ret. So you run it just like that, Ltrace, and then the name of the command. Enter the password. So this looks normal. I'm just going to do A, B, C, D, one, two, three, just so it stands out. We hit enter. Okay, access denied. Exit with status zero. So that wasn't there before. So Ltrace is to look at the library calls. It doesn't show anything. But what if we do S trace and we look at the system calls? Is that any better? So we get a wall of information. And then right here, we see this call to write, enter the password to unlock this file right here. And we see equals 40, because this, I'm assuming if we were to count this, this is 40 characters. And then we see read zero. So write one means write to standard output. There's three file descriptors, write zero is standard input so where you type one is standard output so everything you see on the terminal and number two is standard error so any errors that happen will be written to the standard error which usually just means write to your terminal anyway so it's paused it's waiting it's hanging for us to type something in a b c one two three that's the password i'm guessing we hit enter and it writes out access denied and then it runs lseek to set the uh, file position pointer back to the beginning. Okay, so that didn't work. I was trying to cheese, trying to see if there's any type of like string compare or any type of like C library function compare your password to the entered password, but I don't see that here. We can use strings on the ret and pipe that into less to see what's going on. Oh, we can see the flag pico ctf h. So we can probably piece this together. Everything ends with an H, so we can probably take that out. So we can probably just grab this 
and piece it together. And that's the flag. Oh, even better. We see it right here. Password correct. Please see this flag. So we can grab that and slam it in here. And we solved it that way. But we didn't really reverse engineer anything, did we? We just ran strings. Okay, right here we see a call to string compare, which compares two strings to see if they're equal. But we didn't see that with L trace or S trace. So let's see if we can open this program up in GDB. Tech Q for quiet on RET. I don't have GDB installed on the system. Okay, that's fine. Just grab this. Bear with me, guys. Yes. GDB, if you're not familiar, is the GNU debugger. GNU is the name of the, I guess, people who created it, the organization. I don't know if it's technically a company. The software team, GNU. Ah, that didn't work. It wants me to get an update. So let me update this. Tag Y and sudo app install GDB tag Y. So I'm gonna let this run, I'm gonna let this download and install, and then I'll come back um, once I have G2B open, and then I'll run this in the debugger. So see you guys in a second. All right, thanks for bearing with me, guys. I now have GDB installed, hitting up arrow one more time. So this is the command I ran. I need to update my system, and then app install GDB tag Y, automatically answer yes to any prompts. And we see I have GDB downloaded here. If you're not familiar with it, we can open up the man page. Okay, no man page exists. We can do tech H for help. Scrolling up. So the GNU debugger. So run GDB with any options you have and then the name of the executable file. So GDB, let's do Q for quiet and then RET. So no, de <clears throat> no debugging symbols found. Okay, that's fine. Let's disassemble the main function and we get the output here. All the, uh, what you call it, all the instructions. We get the address, and if you're not familiar with assembly, that's okay. You might be familiar with the C programming language and like different library functions, stuff like that. We can see here a call to printf, a call to scanf. Let's hit C to continue, but we don't see anything for any type of comparison. Oh, here we go, string compare. So let's set a breakpoint here. I can't simply do break star on that, can I? Hit enter. Okay, that seems to work run can i insert breakpoint at one so let's do break main plus so what was that at main plus 176 is it like that yes run start from the beginning star there we go so you need the star there Make this a little simpler. Let's just do clear. Let's do DL, delete all breakpoints. Yes. Let's just take this from the top. Break star main plus 176. Run. Yes. Start from the beginning. Enter the password to unlock this file. Let's just do hello in all caps. We hit enter. You entered hello. We see we hit our breakpoint. If I do another disassemble, Hit C one more time to page down. We see this little arrow here, right? It points to where we're currently are on being. This arrow points to what instruction is about to be executed. So this is where we currently are, right? So it's called the string compare. So how to happen? It's going to compare these two values, RSI and RDI. If we want to know more about string compare, we can just do man stir compare. We can do this in a terminal or on Google, hit enter on the first link. And we see that it's a standard C library call and it takes two arguments, right? Two character pointers, so two strings, string one and string two. And those are the values in RSI and RDI. So these are string one and string two. If we do IR, information on registers, we can see the values here. It's been a little while since I've used GDB, so forgive me if my syntax is rusty, but examine as string the value in RSI. We hit enter and okay, we get our flag. Examine string dollar sign RDI. We get what we put. So disassemble. Okay, so cool. So RSI, if I hit up arrow, is that 
and RDI is what we entered. If we hit C to continue, right, we get the access denied because we did not enter the correct password. Now, if I do run, enter the password to unlock this file. So if I enter what they want right here, now I hit enter. It says you entered this, hit C to continue. Password correct, please see the flag. So that's cool. So the flag is just pretty much, or the correct password is the flag minus like the last two characters. So there we have it. We can use strings to just cheese and look at it. But if it, the information was not available there, we can open this up in some type of disassembler like a GDB or a disk compiler like Ida or a Ghidra, right? So pretty simple challenge, right? We didn't really need to understand most of these assembly instructions. All we needed to know is that it makes a call to shrink comparison. If you're not familiar with what that is, just look it up, right? It has two arguments, and then we see on the stack right before that two values are being manipulated, right? We see everything right here is being loaded into RDX and RAX, and then those values are being stored in RSI and RDI, respectively. Ooh, so there you have it. That's how I solved this challenge. Pretty quick, pretty neat, pretty simple. If you found this fun, be sure to stick around for more reverse engineering content coming soon. As always, take it easy and see you guys in the next video.